when I first bought my 1978 Prindle, I had some trouble figuring out the rigging. And when you ask for advice, people will constantly direct you to the owner's manual, which is fine for many things, but the owner's manual only reflects the configuration as it existed after many changes had been made to the boat design and rigging, which is sometime after 1978. I made this video so it might help others who were having trouble answering some basic questions about how to rig an early boat. I'll note that I'm not a sailing expert, I'm not a catamaran expert, and I'm not a prindle expert. There are many ways to do just about anything, and I'm not going to tell you this is the only way to do it or the best way to do it. It's just what has worked for me. This video would be applicable to you and your boat if you have a boat without ports near the shroud attachments, and if you have a jib with a wire in the luff and not a zippered jib. The part numbers I used and their descriptions can be found below. I'm going to cover only those topics that I was not easily able to find an answer to elsewhere. So there may be uh, other questions you have, and there are other resources that are probably going to be able to address those questions. Uh, I'm only going to talk about the things that gave me trouble. The owner's manual does provide some information on stepping the mast, but I thought it might be helpful to show the parts and how everything kind of goes together. When you've got the mast positioned, you have to lift up the mast step hinge, um, disconnect it from where it normally sits at rest, and attach it to the base of the mast. Here's how it looks close up. The jib halyard and forestay on the early boats is a lot like the Hobie 16. When you tension the jib, um, it the jib um, halyard basically becomes the forestay, and the forestay goes slack. The Hobie 16 forestay is actually a little bit too long because they rake the ba the mast back um, pretty severely. It's about six inches too long. So you need one that's about 17 feet instead of 17 feet, six inches. And just about anybody who makes rigging can make that for you. In addition to the forestay, you need some halyard parts. So you need the early Prindle 16 um, jib halyard with the block. Um, and you can get that at Murray's or at eBay. You'll also need a Hobie jib halyard block assembly. Um, you might be able to use something else. This is what I use. It works fine. It looks exactly like the one that was on the ancient um, jib assembly that came with my boat. Um, they're kind of expensive, but um, well worth it. And then finally, you'll need the short um, Hobie 16 upper forest day pigtail. It's about six inches long. It's almost exactly the same length as the one that the old corroded one that came with my boat. I haven't attached the trapeze wires, so it's easier to see what's going on here. You've got the six inch Hobie upper forestay in the center and on either side of the shroud wires. They're all connected at the mast with the 5 16 inch shackle. The short upper forestay is attached to one end of the Hobie jib block and the 17 foot forestay is attached at the other end of the Hobie jib block. The wire portion of the jib halyard uh, connects to the head of the jib. The wire goes over the sheave in the Hobie jib block and at the other end is a small block on the halyard, which we'll talk about further in a few minutes. Once you have the forestay assembly attached to the mast, you just kind of want to separate things out a little bit and make sure that the portion of the jib halyard that has the small block on the end, uh, which you can see here has a red um, sheet attached to it, you want to make sure that that's closest to the mast. Once you're ready to step the mast, you just kind of want to go to the back and look and make sure that all your lines are clear, that you're not going to snag on anything and cause yourself some trouble. One trick I found after watching an old Hobie rigging video, which will help you step a mast by yourself, is to untie the jib line from the jib block and use that um, to attached to the forestay so that you can use the cleat that's on the jib block to hold the mast in place once you've got it stepped.
But before you step the mast, you've got the jib sheet free of the jib block. You can take the bitter end, bring it forward, come through the shackle that holds the two bridle wires together, and then bring the bitter end back and tie it off to the uh, loose end of the forestay, which is probably sitting on the trampoline. So now you're ready to step the mast. So with your rear foot on the rear crossbar, just lift it up and start walking it forward. And um, the way the mast step hinge is configured, you'll have to kind of lift up and back so that it seats on the little bearing, the plastic bearing. The shroud wires are attached at the side and they're attached at the mast, so they're only gonna let it go so far forward. It, it can definitely come back at this point, but it can only go to the extent that the shroud wires will let it go forward at this point. You can reach down, grab the jib sheet that's attached to the forestay, um, pull it back towards you, um, and that will tension the forestay enough that the mast will not be able to come back. Uh, make sure that it's cleated off, obviously. Where the bridle wires come together, I've got two um, Stay adjusters, one's 10 hole and one's a seven hole. The seven hole's on top. So once the mast is up, you can um, remove the line, or the uh, jib sheet from the forestay, attach the forestay at the very top of the seven hole stay ad adjuster so that you've got the bridle wires, the 10 hole stay adjuster, the seven hole stay adjuster, and then the forestay is in the very top position of that seven hole stay adjuster. Once a mast is up, you want to remove the mast step hinge, disconnect it from the base of the mast so that it can rotate, pull the pin out, reposition the hinge, and then put the pin back in on the crossbar. At this point, the shroud wires are connected at the top part of their adjusters, the top level or top range. So the mast is way too far forward, as you can see here. So we've got to adjust the shrouds so that they're um, further down on the shroud adjuster. And that'll pull the mast back aft. Obviously, you want to take some care here and make sure you got a good grip on that shroud. After you've done this on your boat a few times, you'll know where it needs to go pretty intuitively. So now that the shroud's adjusted, you can come forward to the front, pull or stay forward, and make sure that the mast position is where you want it.
looking up where the shrouds and the forestay are connected at the mast. You just want to take your halyard and make sure that it's moving freely and it's where you want it and that you've got the sheet side of the halyard, the, the rope part, towards the mast and the wire part away from the mast. Now you'll have both ends of the halyard, the jib halyard free. Um, in front will be the shackle that attaches to the top of the jib, the head of the jib, and then the line, uh, the red rope you've seen here. And you can tie that off to that block temporarily. So you can see here how all the bridle wires come up to a shackle, which is attached to the bottom of a 10-hole stay adjuster. And that 10-hole stay adjuster is attached to a 7-hole stay adjuster. And then the 7-hole stay adjuster is attached to the 17-foot four stay. So you're going to want to get your jib out and take the shackle from the wire end of the jib halyard and attach it to the head of the jib. Normally, I would attach the tack and the clue of the jib uh, before raising it, but um, I thought it might make it easier um, just to raise it. I'm not sure if that was the case or not, but that was my intent. The tack of the jib is attached to the lower stay adjuster, 10 hole stay adjuster. Um, probably in the third or fourth hole, um, you can read a lot about tuning for performance and where to put that depending on wind speed. The tension you put on the rope end of the halyard is going to determine the rake of the mast. So you need to get that where you want. Um, I'm just going to temporarily cleat it off here. And you need to go back and reattach your uh, jib sheet to the jib block. And then you can attach the jib sheets to the clue of the jib. The rope portion of the jib halyard is attached to the bottom of the jib block with uh, a bowline. And then what you want to do is bring the bitter end back up and over the sheave in the block. So you've got a loop. And you're going to put that around the cheek block at the base of the mast. And you can tension it there and get the mast in the position you want it and then cleat it off. Once you've got your jib tensioned, the four stay is going to go slack. And using two stay adjusters, um, like we've got here, with the uh, four stay attached to the top of the second one, um, allows you to do a trick um, that I actually learned from um, Joseph Bennett's uh, YouTube channel, um, where he uses a piece of shock cord to tension that four stay. Um, and just keep it out of the way of the jib. It's not actually acting as a force day unless the jib isn't raised. Um, but you want to keep it out of the way. And using a little bit of shock cord will pull it forward and just keep it clear of the jib. So I've got our jib raised and you can see that the four stay is well clear of the jib. Another question I had was regarding the jib block wires. On the newer boats, they show you how to connect everything, but I couldn't find any information about the older boats. So this is how they go. Um, they go from um, a shackle at the base of the shroud stay. You could connect it in another way, I imagine. Um, and then it's 18 and 7 eighths pull to pull, and it's a 1 8 diameter um, wire rope. And I had to have them made. I couldn't find them. Um, anywhere. I suppose you could use double braid and just knot it. Um, or you could use Dyneema, which I considered, but the, 
thimbles, the nice thimbles for Dyneema are so expensive. It just didn't make sense. So I just had them made, um, uh, got them on eBay, and they work just fine. So on the other end of the jib block wire is another thimble, and it is attached to two shackles, one at the base of the jib block, and then another one to a line that goes to the opposite jib block. On the near side, the line is attached to the shackle with a bowlin. It goes through the grommets and the trampoline and then attaches to the shackle on the other jib block with a trucker's hitch so you can tension the line. You want a fair amount of tension on that line. And that's it. Our jib is hoisted and assuming we were in water and had our main hoisted, we could sail. The disassembly is fairly intuitive. It's just a reversal of what you did before. One key thing, I think, if you're lowering the mast by yourself, um, when you disconnect the forestay from the uh, stay adjusters where they meet the bridle wires, um, you want to make sure, um, obviously, that you've tied your jib sheet back to the forestay in the same way it was before so that you can lower the mast, but you want to make sure it's cleated. Um, if it's not cleated, that mast could go over, which would be bad.